Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to today's lesson on our Africa unit. We're doing a case study of Ghana, which was a empire in ancient Africa, and today's focus is going to be trade. How was trade an important factor in ancient Ghana? That sounds like an essential question to me that you might want to write down. And I'll even give you a minute to do it. So our first clarifying left side essential question is why was trade the source of Ghana's wealth? What was it about Ghana's location that made trade extremely important? And we're going to talk about that for a few minutes. First of all, we need to know that Ghana was centrally located for trade and that allowed it to control the trading routes. If you were trading from North Africa to Central Africa, you had to go through Ghana. And if you had to go through Ghana, you had to deal with whatever Ghana wanted, uh, whether that was taxes, whether that was trade. Um, you had to play the game and Ghana was in charge of that game. Uh, many things were traded. Among them were salt, copper, and cowrie shells that were brought to Ghana from the Sahara region. So these were things that were brought through Ghana from the north, because the Sahara Desert was in the north, and those were traded through Ghana and to Ghana uh, to the areas that were south of Ghana in the rainforest region. As we know from lesson number one, gold was extremely important to Ghana. In fact, it means land of gold. And gold had been traded out of the southern forests as far back as 400 to 500 BCE. So there's lots of gold in Ghana and Central Africa. And it had been traded for a very, very long time. And that was an important thing that came from the south of Ghana. So, mostly camels were used. Um, camels were used for travel across the Sahara be primarily because a camel can drink a whole bunch of water and basically work through it over a course of a few days. So camels can stay hydrated for a long period of time even if they don't have available water while they're traveling. That what, that's what makes the camel uh, extremely important in terms of traveling across the desert regions um, of northern Africa and that made them extremely important as um, the vehicle that was used for trade itself. If you didn't have a camel, it was hard to trade. Not too many rivers that you can go up or down in the middle of the desert. So camels traveled across the desert in caravans and all that means is that they um, traveled in very, very large groups uh, together. You didn't go across the desert on a single camel. You usually traveled across the desert in a very large group on camels, known as a caravan. And these caravans would travel from oasis to oasis to make their way across the desert. And an oasis is basically an area of lush vegetation um, that usually had food that just is in the middle of the desert, in the middle of nowhere, and usually they are fed by underground springs that help to bring them water. And it's kind of amazing that there are oases in the desert, um, but there are, and that's what they did, is they mapped out where those oases were, and they traveled like dot to dot from oasis to oasis to make their way across the desert to get to their destination. And then finally, Ghana was invaded by Muslims in the 7th century, um, which brought a lot more trade in from the north. That Muslim influence that brought trade in from the north uh, was extremely important. Um, and that increased trade uh, during that period of time and uh, was also a very important cultural influence on Ghana. So I'm going to give you a moment to make sure you have all these notes before I move on to the next slide. So the trade that was most important uh, in Ghana was the gold-salt trade. Um, gold came from the south, salt came from the north, 
Uh, it was a very important exchange. First thing you need to know is that North Africans really wanted gold, and that gold came from Ghana. People in the southern forests wanted salt, which came from the Sahara. So this sets up a scenario for a exchange, and it just so happens that Ghana was the area that was in the middle of this exchange. So Ghana taxed this trade in both directions, and by taxing it, they became wealthy. So as salt came through from the north headed to the south, Ghana would charge a tax on that salt. As gold came from the south and moved north, Ghana would charge a tax on that gold. And by charging those taxes, Ghana became richer. So there was an area called Wangara in the forests of Ghana, and it had plentiful gold. In fact, it had so much gold that Ghana did everything possible to keep its actually location hidden uh, and secret because they wanted to protect that resource and make sure no one else could come after it. Uh, so it was kept secret. Kind of sounds cool. There is a map of West Africa, and these were the gold producing regions here, and somewhere in there was Wangara. Then there was Tagaza, and it was an important salt producing area in the Sahara Desert. Um, and it had very large deposits of salt. And notice I have underlined the vocabulary word. We talked about deposits. It had very large deposits of salt up in this area up here. So the salt got traded from this area up here down this direction, and the gold got traded from down here up towards this direction. And Ghana was right in the middle here. That is a picture of the salt deposits at Tagaza, uh, literally underneath the desert floor. Not a very pleasant environment. Um, the, this salt was used to preserve food and replace what was lost through perspiration. The, um, Central Africa was extremely hot, extremely humid, so the people who lived there used the salt to preserve their food and to replace nutrients that were lost through sweating. Not the most appealing thing to think about, but it was real. And that salt was extremely important to them. Uh, and they didn't have any locally, so they needed to trade for it. So that worked out well for Ghana. So Tagaza was a miserable place, as I just said, and mining salt was very labor intensive. Uh, you really did not want to be working in the salt mines. It was extremely hot. You're in the middle of the Sahara Desert, one of the hottest places on Earth and you're doing something that's extremely unpleasant. Um, and usually those people, ironically, don't get paid very well. So just, just not a pretty picture. Oops. That is the end of our notes for this particular day. You now have an idea of why trade was important to Ghana. In fact, you have so much of an idea that you are now capable of writing a five-sentence summary describing trade through Ghana, why it was important, what direction it traveled, what was traded, and the impact it had on Ghana, especially from a taxation point of view. So with that, I'm going to cut you loose and set you free to write those summaries. You know I'm going to have you share them with each other. You know I'm going to call on you to share them with the class, and you know it's now time to get started. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Mr. B checking out, signing off, moving on until the next lesson. We'll catch you next time.